Ableton has just announced Live 12. Users can sign up now to be part of the public beta at ableton.centercoat.com. Live 12 has some really interesting new features. There's a new synth called Meld, raw and multi-stage distortion effect, and updates the popular Max for Live tool granulator. While a lot about Live 12 will be familiar to regular users, there are some big workflow changes and things that could upend the workflow even of regular users. In this video, we're going to take a look at five things that you need to know to make the most out of Live 12. The first thing you need to know is a new browser requires a little bit of prep work to get the most out of it. On opening Live 12, one of the things you're likely to notice first is that the browser has had a redesign. Gone are the old folders that would separate things like audio effects and instruments into categories like delays, dynamics, EQs, etc. Instead, Live now uses a system of filters to help you search by type and characteristic. When searching by name, each browser window now has a filter section at the top, which lets users refine the list based on things like sound type, format, or characteristics. Clicking the Edit tab next to these filters allows you to assign tags to anything in the browser, either using pre-existing lists and categories or ones you create yourself. It's worth making use of these tags. While the new browser works nicely for live stock content and official packs in Ableton, has little to help you navigate your own library of sounds and third-party plugins. At least not without a little prep work first. First thing we'd recommend doing is adding type tags to your plugins. For example, synth, delay, EQ, etc. This will help you find groups of similar tools quickly. After this, it's worth turning to your most commonly used sample packs and assigning any tags you think will be relevant, such as sound types for loop, one shots, drums, bass, lead, etc. As well as potentially tagging sounds by characteristics, such as their musical key or general tone descriptions. While doing so requires a fair commitment of admin time, it will really help you get the most out of Live's new browser. With your sounds tagged up, it's also possible to save filter combinations to create automatically updating lists in the sidebar. For example, under the All tab, filter sounds by loop and then drum pattern and hit the plus icon above the list of results. This will create a new sidebar shortcut. This will list anything tagged with these two characteristics, whether it's part of Live stock library, a pack, or one of your own folders, assuming you've added tags. One final sound finding tool worth investigating early on is Live's new similar sounds feature. This can be accessed in the browser or directly via some instruments such as drum racks. This lets users browse to a list of similar samples that Live generates based on the qualities of the audio files, so it isn't bound entirely by tags. It works particularly well with drum sounds, allowing users to quickly swap out single elements or entire kits just to see how it affects your beat or groove. Second thing to note is you can now access the mixer from anywhere. One small but significant change for Live 12 is that you can now pull up the mixer in either of Live's main views, the session view or the arrangement view. The keyboard shortcut to show and hide the mixer, which is Command, Option, and M on Mac, or Control, Alt, and M on Windows, allows you to pull up the mixer whenever needed and hide it whenever you want. The third thing to note is that scales are now far more important to Ableton Live. You could already make use of scales in Live 11, but they're now more flexible and play a more significant role in the DAW's workflow. There are now two places where scale can be defined. The first, the global scale setting. This is found up by the transport bar next to BPM. This defines the overall scale for a project and this will dictate the scale automatically assigned to any new MIDI clips. Scales can also be set for individual clips in their respective menus though. This makes it possible to change the playback scale within a single track or composition. These scales are now considerably more important to Live's workflow too. As with previous versions, setting a scale for a MIDI clip could help you when programming notes in the piano roll or playing an instrument using a MIDI controller. However, Live 12 also adds a new scale awareness function to some devices. What this does is lock the harmonic output of various tools so that they only generate notes or overtones that fit the scale of the MIDI clip in use. Tools that feature this function include MIDI effects, such as the arpeggiator, but also some instrument devices, such as elements of new synth meld. Here, some oscillators and filter modes can be set to be scale aware. Some functions in live, such as the oscillator tuning and the new generative MIDI tools will also operate in scale degrees rather than semitones once you have a scale applied in a MIDI clip. This means that tuning notes will move up and down by intervals in the scale rather than one note at a time. This all means that by assigning different scales to different MIDI clips, 
you can change the scale or key within one project and have all of your devices make that change with you. Fourth thing to know is that you can now generate ideas right within MIDI clips. Live's MIDI clips have been massively overhauled for version 12 with a suite of new tools that can creatively generate and transform MIDI for you. These fall under two tabs found within MIDI clips themselves. The first of these is a suite of generative tools to create MIDI patterns in completely empty clips. Broadly speaking, these each have intended uses, but can be manipulated to perform a variety of functions. Rhythm is a pattern focused generator, ideally suited to creating drum patterns and sequences. Seed is a randomized pattern generator best for melodic lines. Shape is a monophonic generator which will create riffs based around a user defined shape. It's a great tool for leads and bass lines. Stacked is a chord generator that can fill up MIDI clips with a variable set of chord shapes. The second tab focuses on transformation tools. These elaborate on or alter your existing MIDI. These cover a variety of creative functions that will shift the arrangement, pitch, timing, and expression of MIDI notes. Worth noting that by selecting individual notes in a MIDI clip, it's possible to transform only selected parts rather than the clip as a whole. Suite owners will also find that some Max for Live tools, notably the Euclidean Rhythm Generator and Velocity Shaper, can now be accessed directly within MIDI clips. The Pitch and Time Utilities menu has had some enhancements too. Our favorite thing here is the new Add Interval function. This can be used to generate harmonies or chords from single MIDI notes. The fifth thing to note is that Live now has a tuning pool, but this shouldn't be confused with scales. With Live 12, Ableton has done a lot to add to Live's accessibility and broaden up what can be done with the DAW. One key thing that has been done is added the ability to work with non-Western and non-traditional scales, something which has existed in a lot of rival DAWs for a while, but it's nice to see it coming to Live now. These are accessed by a tuning pool, which looks and acts a lot like the existing groove pool. Here users can drag and drop a variety of non-traditional tuning onto the project, which will affect all clips and devices. It's also possible to edit and import tunings yourself. What's important to note is that tunings and scales are not the same thing. Scales in live are based on the 12 notes in familiar Western tunings. While applying a scale will lock out some of these notes, you're still working within the same 12 notes familiar to Western music. Applying a tuning will change the frequency and relationship between the notes themselves meaning you're no longer working with those same 12 pitches. Applying a tuning will lock off the scale function, which helps to avoid confusion. Those are the five key things you need to know to get the most out of Live 12, but there's a lot of cool creative functions to explore as well. We'll be back with some more tutorials looking at the new devices, features, and some cool and crazy things we can do with Live 12. Thanks for watching.